Hello and welcome to this Noesis GUI tutorial video. In this video I will show you how easy it is to use pre-existing controls in Oasis GUI to create complex and exciting UI elements for a game. I will not only demonstrate how quickly you can create such elements, but also how powerful the styling mechanism is and how easily you can change the look of such elements on the fly. In this specific example, we will create a minimap for a first-person shooter game. Of course, we need the game first, so let's go right into the package manager. We are going to go to our assets. And the game we are going to use is for free on the asset store. It's the FPS micro game. It is provided by Unity Technologies and supposed to be used for tutorials on how to extend it with features. But that's not what we're going to do. We're going to extend its UI. So let me import this real quick and I'll be right back. And here we are. The game has been successfully imported. I'm going to delete the default scene that came with the project. And instead, we are going to load the main scene of the game. So here we are. You can see there is a level. Let me quickly demonstrate how the game works. As you can see, pretty standard first person shooter. We have a gun enemy that we can blow up and that drops a health pack. As you can see, there is no mini map in this game. We just have that compass at the top and we are going to extend that with something a little bit more pretty and exciting. But for that, we of course need to install Noasis first. So let's do that right away. Let's go back to the package manager. And once you have downloaded the package from our website, you can just go to add package from disk. And if you are in the right folder where you installed it, you have to unzip what you downloaded into its own folder. And then in here, there is a package JSON and that's what you import. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back again. So here we are, Noasis GUI has been installed and I'm going to create a new folder for whatever we're going to create. Calling it Noises GUI. And we're going to put the settings file that the installation created right in there that already contains the license information. And then we're going to go to the assets folder or menu. There is a new entry in here called the Open Blend Project entry. And that will open Blend for you, provided you have it installed and open the appropriate project. Now I'm going to move that new view that has been created here right into our Oasis folder. We don't need the settings file. There we go. So let's open this. And as you can see, by default, we have just a blue background with a little text and a button here. So let's see whether we can actually make that work in Unity. We go back to the editor, we see that will get installed or imported. And there's now two ways we could render this. We could render it to a render texture and place it anywhere in the world. But in this case, we wanted it to be an overlay, a HUD element. So we're going to attach it to the camera. And the camera in a first person shooter is attached to the player right here. So let's just drop it on there. And as you can see that created a noises view. Let me deactivate the audio listener. We don't need that for a while. And we are going to set the tessellation quality to high. You can basically always do that. That is set lower for legacy reasons. And we're also going to activate anti-aliasing. If you already have that in your game, you don't need that. But in this case, we want a little bit better rendering for the UI. So that should be it. Let's start the game. And here we are. We have it in the center. Everything seems to be working. Obviously, this is not what we want. So let's go back to Blend and we're going to get rid of all of this. And let me increase the view that we have here in a little bit in size. So we have room to work. And then we're going to place initially just a simple grid 
as a main container. And we're going to reset its layout since we want that to fill the entire screen. And then we're going to place a control that will be used to render the actual minimap. Now, a minimap is conceptually just a collection of items. Enemies, NPCs, quest givers, plants, pickups, anything you can think of. It's just a collection of items. And if you want to render a collection of items, there is a aptly named control called the items control. And that is exactly what we're going to use here. We're going to reset its layout again, and we're going to make it 200 by 200 in size. We're going to give it a 10 margin all around, and we're going to anchor it at the top right. Now to make this look a little bit more interesting, let's give it a border brush so we can actually tell where it's at. Let's use a little bit of an orange color. And let's make it a border of five all around. That looks good. And we're also going to give it a background and we're going to use a radial background. And I guess would be something a little along those lines. Yeah, that looks good. So let's save that. Let's go back to the game. And as you can see, it is hot reloading this. So that is all working. So let's keep going. So here we are back in Blended. Now we need to fill this with some data. For that, we're going to select the user control and go to the data tab. We're going to select new sample data here. We can leave the name and we're going to create this for the project. We don't want this sample data to be used either in the document or for the running application because this is going to be randomly generated data that we're just going to use for the design of the UI. And as you can see, it generated some sample data here already. We have a collection which we are going to call enemies. And we want numerical properties on here. Those are going to be the X and the Y coordinate of the enemies relative to the player. Now this collection will create a bunch of sample data entries that are all going to have these two properties. If we click on this button, we can see the generated values. As you can see, it is just feeding some random val values into this. And that's what we will use as our sample data. We're going to create a design time data context, which is a data context for a view that is just going to be used in Blend for design time. And we're going to select our created data here. And now we can go into our items control and down here to our item source property, which is where the items control is getting its data from. And we're going to create a new data binding and we're going to select the enemies collection. And as you can see, there's already something showing up. Let me save everything and close this file. We don't need that. But of course, we don't just want a list of the type name in here. We want this to look like an enemy entry in a minimap. So for that, we need to change some templates. We're going to go to the items control and edit an additional template. And in this case, that's going to be the items template or the item template. That's the template that is going to be used for every single item that we are going to render. We're going to create an empty one. We're going to name it enemy template. And by default, it's creating a grid. We don't need that. Instead, we want an ellipse. And as you can see, it, it, it is creating it for every single entry that we have. We're going to actually reset the layout of that and we're going to make it exactly 10 by 10 in size. And we're going to give it a solid red background. There we go. Now, obviously we don't want this in a simple list, but now let me actually center this and then I'm going to show you how we're going to fix this problem. 
we're going to go back in the scope of our new view and we're going to edit another template. This time the items panel. The items panel is responsible for layouting every single item inside the items control. And as you can see by default, we have a stack panel here. The stack panel is as the name suggests, just creating a stack of elements all on top of each other. That's not what we want. We're going to change this into a grid. A grid is just a basic container that you can lay out things into. You can give it rows and columns. We don't need that. We want everything in the same place. We're going to reset its layout so it's filling the entire view. And then we're going to go out again and you can see now every single circle is positioned in the center. That is what we want as a baseline position because that's going to be where the player is supposed to be located in the center of the minimap. Now every coordinate that we take is going to be relative to that. We're going to go back to our items control and we're going to edit our existing item template. We're going to go onto our ellipse and we're going to scroll down to transformation. And we're going to change its render transform, which is a transform that moves an element while it is being rendered. Now here we have an X and a Y coordinate in the translate transform and we can data bind those individually and we're going to do that. We're going to create a data binding for the X coordinate and we're going to bind it to the X of the enemy's item. That's one of those randomly generated items. And we're going to do the same or the Y coordinate. We're going to save this and we're going to hop out again and you can see now everything is nicely located. Now we still have a problem. All these values, if you remember, were actually positive. So why are they on the bottom? A grid's coordinates or basically any controls coordinates in Oasis GUI has coordinates starting at the top left and going to the bottom right. So any positive value will put stuff on the bottom. But of course, anything with a positive value relative to the player, we want that in front of us. But that's an easy fix. We're going to go back to our items panel template. And not only are we going to change that problem, we're also going to activate clip to bounds. So we're actually not rendering onto the border. But aside from that, we're going to go down to our render transform. And in here we have a nice flip option and we're going to change the Y axis. We're going to flip that and that's going to fix that problem. See, as we come back now, not only are we no longer rendering over the border, we also have these items nicely in front of us. And if we now go back into the game, we can try this out in here. Now, of course, we need to have a view model in the game that will drag that data from the actual FPS shooter game and detect all the enemies that we have in here. And I have some pre something prepared for that. So give me a second to add that. And here we are, as you can see, we added two class files here. Let me quickly show you and write out what those look like. We have the minimap view model. A view model is always the name for a data context that you're assigning to a specific view. In here, we also have an enemies collection. We also have a pickups collection, which we are going to use later. They're of type observable collection, which is a type that is notifying the view whenever its contents change. And they're of type minimap object and a minimap object is simply something that has an X and a Y coordinate exactly like in our sample data context, which is actually important since the API needs to be the same. So let's go back to Unity and I stopped the game because we need this to be a permanent change. We can do that. We can't do that in a running game. We're going to drag our view model right onto the camera just like before, and that will attach it in here as a new component. And that will take care of attaching itself as a data context to the view automatically that is already in the code. So let's start the game. And there you can see there are our two enemies. And we're going to leave this running because we need to add a few more things. Let's go back to blend. 
And in here, we are now going to go back to our data and we're going to create a new collection. We're going to call this pickups. And in the pickups collection, we're going to add the same two simple properties. Again, they need to be numeric. They're going to be X and Y again. And then in here, we're going to simply copy this and paste the copy of our items control. Obviously for this one, we no longer need a background or a border brush since we already added that in the first one. But here we are now going to change the item source. Going to go to the data binding and instead of the enemies collection, we're not going to data bind this to the pickups collection. And as you can see, there's more dots showing up. And here we are also going to go to our item template and we're going to create a copy of it. And this one will be our pickup template. Here we are, we still have our ellipse and the only thing that we are going to change is the background color or the fill color rather in this case. So let's save this, let's go back to the game. And there we are, there is actually two pickups in here. So that is already working great, but this is of course not even close to what is possible in Oasis GUI. We have prepared a, a little bit more complex version. So let me load that real quick and then show you how it works. And here we are back in Blend. And as you can see, things have changed quite a bit. Now we have a circular control with a background image. I will say something about the background real quick in a second, but let's go into the actual item templates really quick because they actually have animations. As you can see, the enemy template has a little bit of a rotation animation. It's a little bit hard to see since they're overlapping, but we'll see that in the game a little bit more. And if we step out and look into our other items control, you can see that also has some animations. In this case, a little bit of a spin animation for the cross. And you can also see that everything is now wrapped into a view box, which is also data bound to a size property that we have on our view model. I will show you that in the game view model in a second. And that will mean we can now scale this. If you wrap something into a view box, that allows you to basically scale anything that's inside it. So let me go back to Rider real quick and show you what I do with the background here. The background is a simple render texture and I'm generating a orthogonal camera that is going to look down onto the player and is updated every frame to be synchronized with the player's rotation about the vertical axis. And if we go back to the game, this is what that looks like. As you can see, we now have a nice view of our game world and we can even go back to our main camera here into this component and we have a nice slider where we can now scale this up a little bit and as you can see thanks to the vector based nature of Noasis GUI everything stays nice and sharp and let's see whether we can actually clean up this level now there we go we don't need that pick up in here we have the second enemy, the one that's a little bit tougher. So let's see what we can do here. Let's grab that last health pack and then let's finish him off. And there we go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to leave us any questions you may have about this and what we did here today. And we hope you will consider Noesis GUI for one of your projects. If you come up with anything cool during your evaluation period, obviously let us know. We love to see that stuff. And with that, I'll leave you for today. Goodbye.